Hey there, Nerd Clan. To dress like a true Scotsman, you need a kilt. And scotlandshop.com, they're your experts on hand to help. Let them give you a hand to choose your tartan and to take your measurements to have an authentic and traditional kilt made in Scotland just for you. And Anything you get at scotlandshop.com, whether it's a kilt, a blanket, a hat, an accessory, you can get 15% off by using the coupon code OUTLANDERCAST. That's just one word, OUTLANDERCAST at checkout. Tell you what, my heart is still actually pounding after that experience at Culloden. I mean, it was just, it, what, a, what a climax epic to that it was it was because it felt like in a weird way all the roads led to that point the history and and our past is still very much present and and i feel proud to be i feel proud to be scottish i feel oh. proud to share this with the rest yeah. of the world the entirety of it the arc of it to end on that was pretty special i do have one more surprise finally it's arrived no your own wee assassin it's not true wow that's for you mate thank you you might have to share it with me though well, I was going to, like, keep it. No, you have to Come on. Come on. Oh, I'm going to fight. There we go. <laughs> Thanks, you mate. You love these two. You really do get to know somebody when you're on a, <laughs> a trip <laughs> like this. <laughs> Stuck in a shoebox. Cheers to an amazing road trip. Yeah. Really. Men in, in kills. kills. A road trip with Sam Graham. Beautiful day. What can go wrong? Midges. Ah. Go away, midges. It feels a little bit like sensory overload. Oh. We've experienced the terror. Oh. Jesus. Jesus. Fuck. <laughs> we are still alive. I'm not going to say no thanks to you, but are you actually peddling? Debatable. You know, mate, as much as I've enjoyed winding you up, surely not. I couldn't think of anyone else I'd rather share a road trip with. Yeah! Oh. Oh. oh, it's heaven! Is he breathing hard? I don't think he is. You would be my, my choice if we were to do it all over again. It's I really hope really... we do do it all over again, and I mean that. It's been lovely. It, it really has. Are we Jochen Doris? Oh, yeah, we ended on a good one. From Providence, Rhode Island, welcome to Outlander Cast. It's a podcast dedicated to the show's Outlander and Men in Kilts on Stars. Everybody and welcome. My name is Mary Larson. My name is Blake, and I, and I think I've been convinced to try the Sassanac whiskey. Um, do you want to know what I was just trying to find out if that we can get it in Rhode Island? <laughs> Listen, you know what? I think I know ways around that little, that little, <laughs> that little nudge that we have to do there. Yeah, I know people. Yeah, you do. I, I got a guy. Okay, I got a guy somewhere. I know I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Boston. People from Boston always got a guy. You're right? Everybody has a guy. So we are so excited. I mean, this was the culmination episode. Uh, we, of course, had Kalad and we had a lot of recaps and all this... Um just trip down memory lane when it came to Sam and Graham. And we want to thank you for taking this trip with Blake and myself, our final show recap. But before we get into this episode, we want to remind you that Blake and I are going to keep on podcasting. First off, we are going to continue to finish up the book Clan Lands, which is the kind of sister project of Men in Kilts, the, the written book version. It goes into different bits, of course. Um, you can find everything we do at maryandblake.com. We don't just podcast about Outlander cast. We podcast about This Is Us, about Harry Potter, about Game of Thrones. You're going to be podcasting pretty soon about The Last Kingdom. We cover all sorts of fandoms. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, all by searching Mary and Blake. And we would be remiss if we didn't thank our beloved friends 
at jointhenerdclan.com. They make all of this possible. They fiscally help support the show. It's listeners like you that make this possible. We also lastly want to remind you that if you are an Outlander lover and if you like to read the books, we want to invite you to the Outlander Cast Clan Book Club. Our Outlander Cast staff member, Angela Hickey, has been leading an awesome read-along book club where you get to just delve into the books, read them up as we get closer and closer to Diana Gabaldon's <laughs> newest book at some point. But we have a, you know, everyone kind of has a good guesstimate and Angela is pacing the readings yes. so that you'll be ready for that together. So if you've read the books and you want to continue or maybe this inspires you, come on in the Outlander Cast Clan Book Club on Facebook. All right, let's get into the show. All right, Blake, the details of this final episode of Men in Kilts. The final episode of Men in Kilts, the season finale, is entitled Culloden, Scotland's most infamous battle. And that's that. And what a way to actually sit and focus on mm. one thing. Just focus. Focus on one thing. Allow it to be. You know, and I was very excited by that. Marvin, you're... Kilt rating. There you go. There go. I'm giving this episode on a one to five scale. And those of you joining us live, this is where we want to hear it from you. What did you think? One being the worst, five being the best. I give this episode a five. Yeah. I loved this episode. It just, it striked the, the right marks, which I'll talk about in my later GBG. Blake, how about you? I'm going to give this one a four nine. Which is essentially a five since yeah. you're a very harsh critic. Okay. I, I really liked this episode. This This felt like... Uh, if you are a member at jointhenerdclan.com, you know that we do knee-jerk reactions to mm-hmm. a lot of things. And our knee-jerk reaction is uh, the, our first thoughts immediately after viewing whatever we're going to be covering. It's like the first thing that comes into our brain right after we finish it. And my knee-jerk reaction was this felt like – this episode felt like the show that we were supposed to get. Oh, yeah. Uh, this felt like um, what I was coming to the show for. Uh, to to take it on and, and enjoy it and learn and mm-hmm. but and then but learn but at the same time have some antics not have antics but at the same time learn if you and know it what wasn't I mean. completely disjointed like a, you know, we'll get into this sorry yes. so my GBGs was this episode was really well done it wasn't too cheesy but it also wasn't too depressing and we did we focused on the battle of Culloden yep. we were able to. Um, you know, learn more about the weapons that they used and the different ty- types of fighting styles that they used, but it was at Kalad and we got right. to understand the different mentalities and, you know, calling of the families, but it was still all centrally related. So it could, you know, in essence, it was kind of like a war and fighting episode slashed with Kaladin, but they just meld so beautifully. And I think that if we had a chief complaint of Men in Kilts overall as a series, it's just that it was so quick in so many of these different topics that you just felt like you were a bouncing bunny, you know, okay, we're here, we're there, we're everywhere. And this episode was just so well done. Nothing felt like overly, overly cheesy, as I said, where there's been a couple of moments where you sit there and you go, ooh, that oh, was like, too like much. Like falling and laying and sprawling into the grain. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> in the first episode. My bad. So it's not truly a bad, uh, but I was so nervous and I'm excited. I'm interested to know for our viewers who are watching live, I was actively physically nervous during the weapon scenes that I was nervous that someone was going to get hit while they're thrashing around and really swinging those swords. I was nervous that someone was going to get clanked in the face or... They, they were pretty spaced w- well apart. I know, but if anyone had depth perception issues like I do, they would have lost an arm. Mm-hmm. My great is I really love these two men. Blake and I talked a bit during the episode, and I said, you know, it's just so fun. We've been able to see Sam and Graham on different interviews. We've had the pleasure of interviewing Graham Hewen as well as so many members of the cast. Haven't had Sam yet, but you were able to interview him actually on the Graham red McTavis. carpet. She uh, said Graham Hewen. <laughs> they became one one person. It, it was a home brain. home learning day today. Yes, so. <laughs> yes, exactly. Distance learning has has ruined my brain today. Um, but anyway, we, we've interviewed Graham before. You've been able to yes. interview Sam on the red carpet. Yes, told him that I was Team Frank right to his face. Yep, that didn't go over still too well. one, Still one of my proudest and, moments. And, but 
I really loved how we got to spend time with them as individuals. We've been able to see Sam and just to understand just he's a happy little puppy. And Mm -hmm. to see this more, though, to spend so much more time with him, he's so different than Jamie Fraser. Yes. And I like it because I think when you only see a little bit of Sam in short interviews or just on the red carpet or looking as dashing as he does, it's hard for us to differentiate Jamie Fraser, King of Men versus Sam Hewen, the most optimistic, playful, yeah. kid at heart, you know, loves to laugh and, and make trouble and drink whiskey as does Jamie but it was just really nice because now Sam is fully fully Sam in my brain and when I watch Jamie he will be Jamie but I know they're not the same person but this helped me really well yeah I mean it's hard yeah it's hard to differentiate when you've spent how many years with Jamie as Mm -hmm. opposed to Sam yeah like I and again we know that you're spending time with Sam as Jamie but like it's it's different I mean he's embodying a different person Mm -hmm. and Sam I think as a person is much more playful uh than Jamie the character yes uh and 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 it's that's a good distinction to make it's a very good distinction to make so that is that. Is that your full GBG? That was my GBG, my right. good, my bad, my greats. Those of you joining in live, let us know your goods, your bads, your greats. All right, my good uh, is spending actual time with the guests. The interview, the people that they're yeah, yeah, interviewing? Yeah, like, like mm-hmm. spending time with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, like the, the first guy, Alistair, uh, Alistair Moffat. Mm-hmm. The they historian, sat with him. right? Yeah they, yeah, they sat with him for a while. I could have sat with that guy the entire episode. I know. I, that's what I wanted. He was really good. He was really good. And uh, the same thing with the lady at at, at, at the Culloden Battlefield. I, Who, by the way... Her name's Katrina. And so casually dressed. I love that she's just right. like straight up in jeans, long <laughs> socks, some like mucky boots, a ponytail. Either she just does not worry about her time on screen. Right. Or she was just told that morning. Yeah, she like showed up to work and she's like, oh, and they're like, hey, yeah, hey, uh, Katrina, cat, yeah. you know, you, you're doing this thing. I don't know. It's it, it's going to be like a documentary Two guys or something. are showing up. I don't know. They've just... got like a GoPro. <laughs> Can you just do it? Okay, sure. <laughs> but honestly, when you go back and rewatch this episode, she is so casually dressed versus the pompous circumstance that you think right. of the dancing um, episode, you know, where they had the whole band. Or Sarah Fraser, how, yes. how gorgeous she looked. Like if you took Sarah Fraser and then just made her like the beach vibe version yeah. who just doesn't care it about Katrina, getting dressed, it would be Kalad. Katrina. Yeah. <laughs> I dug her vibe. I was like, way to go, Katrina. <laughs> Imagine just being Katrina thinking like, yeah, I got my North Face on. Yeah. You know, I got some, I got some sneakers. She and... like had her homemade granola. Yeah. And... <laughs> and her boss was like, hey, you like to perform, right? Oh, yeah, I do community theater. Cool. All right. Lace up those boots. Oh, you already have? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, good. All right, we're ready to go. Got these two guys with their GoPros. These two guys and a GoPro showing she probably up. probably doesn't Just... even know what Outlander is. No, no way. No chance. I mean, she probably does because she works at Culloden. <laughs> and you think about how many Outlander fans or, actually come to Culloden. Or she's like, oh my God, these Outlander people. <laughs> Maybe she that thinks was it. She thought it was like two, two jabronis from a podcast. <laughs> she thought it was like me and you. Yeah, I know. Like, oh my oh, God, fine. I know those Outlander people. Yeah, okay. I know. I know. I refuse to watch that show just because it's so freaking popular. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. And then here comes Sam and Graham with their entire crew. Yep. Guaranteed that's what happened. Yep. Uh, okay. Uh, so, yeah, spending time with the guests and learning and slowing down. This episode was still pretty well, pretty fast paced, but certainly not as much as previous episodes. And just taking the time to be there. The editing was really was really good. You want to know something wild? What's so that? this of course is like a 30 minute episode. They all are. Yeah. The Battle of Culloden was 60 minutes. So if yeah. you think about how short this episode was, how quickly it still went by, even though we were able to spend time on this subject matter, yeah. double that and that was the entire Battle of Culloden. Yeah, right. Or, how just, or just like a regular episode of Outlander. Yeah. That's what that's what the Battle of Culloden was. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, the bad for me, and I hate to say this because he's my Patronus. Uh, we have our friends on Facebook reminding us that she did know Jamie's full name. So she know. does know. Yeah, but, the, and but that's this is I'm our joking. head cannon. It, it, this is oh, our yeah, head, yeah, this is, We're just yeah, joking. Because she obviously knows Outlander. She works at Culloden. Yeah. Um, he's my Patronus, and I hate to say this, but Graham's sweater at Wait, the end. Wait, this is your bad? Yeah, yeah. Is his 
outfit it's, choice. It's his sweater. This is your bad. It's my bad. The guy who's wearing pajama pants. Yes. Yeah. In my Outlander Cash Finale party t-shirt, yes. Yep, and an old hat. Okay. And a ratty old Red Sox hat. Listen, okay. I'm not paid thousands of dollars to go on Men and Kills. That sh- sweater was probably thousands of dollars. Graham McTavish has impeccable styling I, choices. I hope he got a receipt because <laughs> that was not a great sweater. It looked itchy. It looked. It actually looked like super cozy. Oh, no, no, It looked no. like it's soft got, it's and got, cuddly. It looked like you, you look at it and your eyes start to water from all the itchiness. We're going to have to take another look at it because I saw it as soft fabric no, and you I, saw, I it saw it as itchy. It, it okay. might, might as well have been a a, a steel, uh, a wool steel, whatever they are. Just be uh, happy scrubby. that they don't sh- sell that at, I don't even know where I shop, Trader Joe's. If Trader <laughs> Joe's sold clothing, I'd be buying it all. It was like 40 million that. different colors. Yeah. Dude, like, no, I'm I out. I love it. I'm out on that sweater. Probably brings him so much joy that he's like, this is going to be the final outfit. Of this show, so probably his <laughs> favorite is, he was sweater. Built, you know, it, it, the whole show was not building to Clodden. Oh no, 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 no! The whole show was building to Graham sweater. There you go. What was your grade? <laughs> uh, it shows you though how good this episode was that I have to rank on Graham's sweater for it to be better. That literally your kilt rating is a four point nine. The point one being a sweater. Well, well. If not, then bust it to a five, Blake. No, I'm, I'm not. We're not going five. Can't do it. Okay. Can't do it. I don't. I don't go passing around fives. Okay. Um, my great though, uh, the, it's a tie. First, orienting the graphics so that they overlaid onto the actual. Uh, it's like a Google Map. Yeah, it Satellite was like a Google view, Map. Street I thought view. that was Satellite really cool. View, street view. I, I really like that. That takes time and effort, and you have to plan that out. Get the right shots and the right orientation and the right perspective. Like. Really nice. Agreed. I did not expect that. It gave you a whole different level of appreciation for what you're seeing. You want to have those graphics when you go to Culloden. Absolutely. Right? Like I, I want to have like an iPad that mm-hmm. just like shows it to me when I move it, you know. Yeah, um, yeah you get a whole different appreciation uh, and an understanding of the battlefield and all of the orientation for how far things are from each other. Uh, really, really liked that. Mm. But then also, too, the the real great for me is feeling, like legitimately feeling the reverence and the respect for Culloden, uh, the way that I think we as Outlander fans, you know, all these Outlander nerds kind of want it to be. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, again, we, we've talked about this before. I mean, this isn't, you know, Waterloo, this isn't, you know, um, this isn't the the, the Stalingrad, but this is a big deal. This, this, this battle changed the trajectory. I mean, like they said, it was like a genocide. Like you, you eradicated, um, this culture and these people and either killed them or shipped them off. And it was never the same, Right. you know, the, the way that they lived their life, the way that they, ran their country was not allowed to be that way again. Yeah. And as someone who's never really been in complete touch with my heritage and roots and but Outlander But you've been able to live it vicariously through mine. Yes. <laughs> I I mean I'm Irish and Danish. That's yeah. what I am. Um but through Outlander and through you and through all of the people that we do the show with and mm-hmm. uh the podcast with like I, I got I got really emotional yeah. at the end when the guy, the sole bagpiper is playing around the monument. And mm-hmm. I, I feel like a little bit of a poser saying it because I, I feel like I am. I feel like I'm the, I'm the concert t-shirt guy right now. We need to do your genealogy because you may have Scottish in you. I might. And I, if you do, leave that flag. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> uh, no, but I, just, just as someone who has come to appreciate Scotland and mm-hmm. its culture and everything that comes along with it, especially during this time. Yeah, absolutely. This is uh, this was an emotional moment uh, for me. I can't even imagine what it must be like for people who are from Scotland mm-hmm. or live there or or 100 percent like, you know, that's that's a big deal. So I really appreciate that. And that was my great. Awesome. That is that. Marvin. So uh, what else stood out to you in this particular episode? Well, I just have a fun little story time before we get into this episode. Okay. Um, even though both my parents, my mom and my dad's side are Scottish, my dad actually has a lot more memories and knowledge. Like the Scottish 
um, culture and pride ran real deep and still runs real deep with my dad today. I mean, <laughs> he like brings it up, I yes. feel like, yeah. uh, at least once a month. So we were celebrating our little lad's birthday this past weekend and my parents are all vaccinated and this is the first month that we've been able to celebrate and do things together as as a family unit. And we were talking about birthday traditions. Yep. And I didn't have any birthday traditions growing up. We're making birthday traditions with our little family, with our our little clan, Clan Larson, that it's a birthday week. Your whole week is celebrated. You get to pick the shows, the food, all these fun things, especially in a pandemic. Why not? Mm-hmm. And they asked Blake about his, what was your family tradition? Oh, uh, birthday boy or girl always gets the rose on the cake. Oh, okay. Yes. Because, you, yes. you know, here you put roses on the cake and mm-hmm. uh, out of, made out of frosting and it's a whole glob of frosting. That's <laughs> all it is. That's all it is. It's just a glob of whatever you're eating. And yeah. so, yeah. You always get the you always get the rose. So we just went around the room, you know, talking about family traditions for birthdays. And my dad said, you know, my mom used to take a big dollop of butter and put it on my nose every birthday. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why. And he said, and I honestly haven't thought about that for 50 years. This is so weird that like I haven't thought about my butter nose on my birthday. So we looked into it and so my my grandmother's family um are mcdonald's and they were originally then based out of nova scotia yep. and then of course scotland and it's a scottish birthday tradition is yeah. putting butter on kids nose is like it's some kind of blessing it's a way to luck. slip out of bad luck that's what it is that's- yeah so if you just Google Scottish butter birthday, you're going to see all these images of kids with butter. And I kind of want to do it with our kids now. I kind of want to do it too. Let's do it. Let's like take Let's it butter, and just make it our butter own. No- well, and that's the thing. Like it's something my, my dad forgot. He probably the last time he had a butter nose was 16 or 17. And then his mom passed away yep. shortly after. So he never buttered my nose, but I just, I just loved that. And I was like, I need to share that. You know, it's things... Roses like, and butter. Things like that I want in Men in Kilt season two. Butter birthday nose. <laughs> uh, it's funny. Um, yeah, no, I'm in, man. Roses and butter. Let's do it. We'll, we'll do that from now on. Yes. Just just a little bit on the nose. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, what else stood out to you uh, about this episode, Mary? Like, I know you said you got, you got kind of worried that one of them was going to whack each other during the fight training scenes. Um, I, you know, I, I kind of liked... That whole thing, that whole training montage, well, not montage, but the whole training scene. Yeah, I mean, as much as I loved being with Alistair, the historian, because we're Outlander fans and we've learned a lot about Kalad and we've done our own research. Yeah. We've, um, you know, done interviews with historians. We're, we're reading Clan Lands. I feel like we have a pretty good grasp about Kaladin. Still, I learned a lot from this episode, but the visual aspect of the fighting with the weapons. I think is one of the more memorable aspects of this episode for me. When when you see Outlander and they're all just carrying these weapons and they're charging and they're running, it's so many people at once. Mm-hmm. Or maybe, you know, Sam's helping train uh, the army and everything, you know, just train, I mean, it's, I call it army, but just the, train the farmers and the random jabronis that showed up. Yeah. Um, Jamie, not Sam, excuse me. But it was just... I don't know, just to have that moment and you got to see Sam and Graham hold these weapons and realize what they could do. And even even Graham, you know, holding that different object that had that weird hook on the end. Like, I don't even know what that hook was for. You know, the one that was like an axe with the <laughs> yeah, hook on the end. Yeah. Ugh. Well, you, you stick it with somebody and you pull it out. Oh, gosh. OK. Oh, yep, yeah. That makes sense. And, you know, he was saying, okay, so we're going to do the same moves, except I kind of need to use two hands and to know that this is how they battled. Mm. Obviously, it was so different. And, and Sam even said that, you know, you think about it now, we've got drones, we've got this, people are miles away from battle. Sure, yeah. And yet this is carefully planned out. Right up. People are straight up you there. Can smell the other guy's breath. You need to like angle yourself the other way so that you avoid a shield because right. that's what you got coming at you. Right, I just right. found the actual battle stuff to be really, really interesting, as I said, especially because of that visual aspect. Yep, yep. Uh, The only part for me, I think, that didn't seem to fit in with the tone of the episode was when uh, Sam had had the Dirk, and he's like, yeah. He's like remembering to when he kills Dougal. Like, it's like played off as like a funny moment. And... You know, as someone who watches the show and really respects that moment uh, that that happens, 
I kind of wish that didn't happen. I kind like I kind of wish they did not include that to be a funny thing. Or almost if you could have been like, "This is awkward," <laughs> you know? Like, yeah, like have it be a little bit more organic. Like it's it's obvious what they're doing. Like they obviously yeah. planned it. And again, yeah. you're they're falling prey to that intentional jokey thing. Yeah. Aside from that. I I liked all of it. I I thought it was really good. I thought it was really well shot, really well edited. The story was told. Mm -hmm. uh, A complete through line was made throughout the entire episode. Uh, In fact, I, I noticed it right from the beginning when they're... At the they're at the battlefield and they're reciting that poem and they're screaming and whatever like that was cool and yeah. then they go to driving to there talking about it talking about the effects then they get right into the history and then they get into the 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 weapons training then they do the weapons history and then they go to the battlefield they have the music and it all just has one great through line really loved all that but the stuff with the Dirk. Um, yeah, I was not. I was not okay. a fan. I was not a fan can, of that. I can appreciate this. And then, of course, this though. This was another moment. If, if you know, back, you know, if we could just go forward in time, this is going to be another moment with with Sam and Graham charging with their white blouses or white shirts yeah. and their kilts and the sword and the shield and running that distance, yeah, just this, charging ahead with the bagpipes. Yeah, that was a moment that I thought when I when I saw it in the trailer. Like seeing these two kind of like run in slow motion, I thought it was going to be cheesy. And when it first started, I was like, oh, no, don't do this. But the way that it was shot um, Mm -hmm. and then the way that it was edited and presented, especially when they went to that, you know, that big, big wide shot from the top and seeing and then overlaying the graphic. Like you said, the perspective of knowing how far the Highlanders had to charge. Yeah, it, it w- you could see the purpose. It wasn't just to look good running slow in these shirts and kilts. It was, but no, no. It, it, but they did. They obviously did. But it, it was to show you how far this these people had to go. And uh, and especially at the same time with all of the, um, the bagpipes playing mm-hmm. and the, the emotionality of it and the inevitability of it and the, 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 how finite it is and um, how fatal it was. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I thought it was a moment that was played off really well. I agree. I thought it was a moment that was played off really well. Just a really lovely episode. Their little recaps at the end, the merriment and the, you know, saying we were scared or we had fun, we laughed, the midges. Oh my gosh. I could see Sam bat away midges and talk about them for 20 minutes straight and just continue to laugh. That would be like my modern version of America's Funniest Home <laughs> Videos is Sam Hewen batting away midges. Well, and before we continue, though, we yep. want to talk about our sponsor, ScotlandShop.com. Mm-hmm. So kilts, as you know, men in kilts. We love kilts. We're in the kilts. I got yes. a kilt. Yes, you Mary's do. got a kilt. I do. I do. Sarah Fraser's got a kilt. She does. She, she's floor length. Oh, length. floor length kilt. I kind of want one now. I'm not gonna lie. Um, they come. They, they come from all different shapes and sizes and different kind of tartans, all different pa- patterns, everything fabrics, and that's all gonna be fit to you. Mm-hmm. And I know you want one. I know you nerds out there want one because who doesn't? E- even if it's like me, I have a Mackenzie tartan. Just because I'm a poser and I want one. That, that's how it goes. It's all good, man. And I know that this is a lot. It can be a lot for you. I get it. But ScotlandShop.com is here to help you. Trust me, these people are awesome. They offer virtual appointments via video call so they can talk you through how to order and help you take your measurements. And, and all the different kinds of accessories. Because you know there is a billion. Oh, completely. You got, you got the little pin that goes at the bottom. You got the, the stirrups. You got to figure out uh, what spore and to wear. You, you, got, you get 60 million different things here to go. And they're going to take care of you. Oh, they do. I mean, the hat that I'm wearing tonight on this live is from ScotlandShop.com. It's just it's just so fun. If you have Scottish heritage, to really like plunge into it and to see the different tartans, because there are different ones for different purposes, to see the different accessories that can be there, whether you want a kilt or you want a blanket or a scarf, or even, they even make wedding garters. Oh, yeah. Right? I'm in. Can right? We, can we get some? I'm... I 
Listen, man, I'm looking. I'm living in leggings right now. <laughs> like, hate to break it to you. It's okay. We'll figure it It'll out. It'll just be a decoration right now. But I love you. I love where you're going for this. Well, I wasn't talking about you. I was talking lo- for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we we love this shop so much that we're giving you a coupon code for 15 percent off at the checkout. You just type in OutlanderCast, just one word, OutlanderCast, and uh, you can grab yourself a hat. You can grab yourself a garter. You can grab yourself a kilt. Just talk to them. They'll take care of you. And you know what? You get to relive a little bit of your fun from Outlander Scotland and Men in Kilts just listening to their amazing Scottish accents. Trust yes. me, they're good people. They'll take care yes. of you. And we wouldn't have we wouldn't let them be a partner on our show if we didn't like Agreed. them. So Agreed. go there. Marvin, um, what about Men in Kilts sticks out to you overall? Uh, I know we'll probably have a little bit of uh, uh, a season wrap yeah. for Men in Kilts. But, you know, just as your current thoughts are... Uh, what stands out to you most uh, about Men in Kilts? And did it accomplish what you thought it was set out to accomplish and what it probably actually set out to accomplish? Yes. I think that this show, particularly with the title of Men in Kilts, especially with this finale, it just tied it all up with a beautiful bow. What I expected out of this show was to spend time getting to know Sam and Graham, getting to see their relationship, getting to hang out and see Scotland through their eyes. Is it the most in-depth? No. But to me, it kind of felt like, you know when you go on like a cruise and you stop at different ports and you really only have four or six hours and you don't get to necessarily feel what all of Greece feels like, but you get a little tasting for it. Yes, yes. That's what I expected out of the show with these guys who occasionally wear kilts is to show us things about the Scotland culture. Everyone can leave either learning a ton or at least learning a little something that maybe they didn't know. Uh, maybe you just sat there and it was in awe of the gorgeous scenery that Scotland gives us. Maybe you just listened to the Scottish accents and it just made you feel like maybe you could travel again someday during this pandemic. I'm telling you, this show was what my heart needed in Droughtlander in a pandemic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally agree. Um, Tammy, Tammy on Facebook says it's like going on a tour with two fun friends. Uh, yes, absolutely. I would, I would agree. I would, I would love to kind of hang out with these two just to see what happens. Like, if I could be the, if I could be the Duncan Lacroix that just like kind of shows up. And that leaves when he needs to and then goes Which back. Which I'm surprised he never showed up in oh, the show. I know, I know. But he shows up, of course, in the book, yes. Clan Lands. Yes. So I was I was I was really hoping that we would get him on the mm-hmm. show. I thought that was I okay. thought he was gonna be great. Uh for myself, I think the show accomplishes what it set out to. Mm-hmm. Um which is be fun. Yes. You know, it, in my estimation, it's the Scottish version of the trip. Um and the trip is still, in my eyes, my favorite version of, uh, you know, this style, like, you know, somewhat semi-scripted documentary. Um, but I, I think it, it's, it, it accomplished what it needed to. Be fun, give a little history, and really survive on the chemistry of our two main characters, or, or, of Sam and Graham. And it, you're, you're relying on those two to supply the the impetus mm-hmm. and the the momentum for the sh- for, forward for the show did it set up what i want did it accomplish what i wanted it to accomplish no it didn't uh i wanted more i wanted more tactile stuff i wanted more historical stuff mm-hmm. i think the, the like episodes 4 through what 3 through 5 really maybe 3 through 6 really suffered from not knowing what it was supposed to be uh, and, but like the last two episodes were very good. Yeah. They were very good. They were very focused and they were very pinpoint, uh, which is great. And it was really a love letter. That's what it really was. That's what it comes down to. It was a love letter to Outlander. It was a love letter to Scotland. Uh, and it was a love letter to these two. Uh, it was, you know, it was awesome. Mm-hmm. One thing that it kind of did for me too, this episode was it made me remember how awesome the battle joined was as an as an episode of television mm-hmm. the season three premiere of outlander is incredible like you forget like that moment with rupert and when they're sitting or oh, i'm sorry when they're standing in the farmhouse and he's off and he's got his eye patch on and he's he's like just waiting to die and in the background you see one of his buddies get shot mm-hmm. uh, and executed 
that was that like that was one of those moments that you just never forget. That whole first episode of season three. Oh my was, gosh, she was so good. It was a great episode, and having all of those scenes intercut uh, throughout this particular episode mm-hmm. of Men in Kilts, not only did did the 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 graphics help the orientation and give you a better perspective of the battlefield but using the actual footage from Outlander that was used for the the battle of Culloden um really it really helps again pinpoint the emotionality of what you're watching not only uh, the battle the way that it was depicted in Outlander but the way that the history is being talked about um in in this episode, uh, I thought it was it made me a lot more emotional than I thought it was going yeah. to, and it made me want to watch the battle joined again. I know, right? I mean, we were saying that we were like the, all of these episodes that we're pulling from, we want to rewatch again, like with all this knowledge, and just I mean, we obviously rewatch them anyway. There's there's different ones that I keep on the background. I don't necessarily always keep the battle ones though on the background. Yep. Rubs me up a little too much, even though they're beautifully <laughs> shot. So it's it really is. It's I think it was a beautiful series. Was it perfect in the documentary series? Vain? No, but this was like a brand new adventure. This was something that Sam and Graham said, let's give this a go. Let's see if stars will take this on. The answer was yes. They got a team together and they did a lot of it in a pandemic. Yeah, I'll tell you, I'm really proud of, Mm -hmm. like, listen, Sam's not my cup of tea necessarily, but I'm really proud of him. I mean, this guy put this all together in a relatively quick fashion. And, and you're more of a Graham guy. I'm a Graham guy. <laughs> I told you, Graham is my know, Graham know. is my Patronus. You're a wizard, Harry. And he's my he he would be my I would be my animagus if yeah. if uh, if possible. Um, but I'm really proud of him. I'm and I look back and I and I start looking at all, all the things that the guy's doing. I mean, he's got his he's got his kilt he's, that he's mm-hmm. got going on. He's got the Sassanac thing going on. He's got the he's got the being Jamie Fraser in yeah. Outlanda. He's got all the other acting gigs and he's putting this show together. He's producing it, selling it, mm-hmm. financing it, doing everything all by himself. Yeah. Oh, I mean, he's got a team of people, but still, yeah. like. There's a lot of stuff going on for he's, this guy. He's a mover and a shaker and a very, very determined man. So yeah. even though he may have a bit more energy than you particularly like, if you're more of a Graham guy sitting yeah. at the counter with a sweater, even though you don't like his taste in sweaters, it's okay. I mean, look at that sweater. That's, I know. That sweater is god awful. Um, but I agree. I mean, I, I'm i more of a Sam person when it comes yes. to personality types. So I see this... I loved getting to know them. I just loved getting to know them better. It's made me want to go to Scotland even more than I already did, which I didn't even think was possible. And what I in particular really loved is that we got to share this episode with our friends live, mm-hmm. you know, in, in our recaps. We're doing this podcast, of course. So it's not just like watching this fun show and that's it. We really got to digest it, relive it, watch it a couple of times, see what other people picked out. Um, it's it's just been a really fun experience overall. It made me feel connected in a time when I feel like a lot of people feel disconnected. So yeah, yeah. thanks, Sam and Graham. Yeah, really, honestly. So uh, you got anything else you want to say about this episode, my love? That's, that's really it. I just wanted to remind everybody that we are continuing to have Outlander Cast podcast episodes where we're going to be finishing up the Clan Lands book. Yep. <laughs> this is going to al- allow us a little bit more time since we're not watching Men in Kilts anymore as well. So if you are joining us live, just know that we are going to continue with clan lands yes uh, we're actually uh, our last chapter that we completed was the culloden chapter so it's actually fitting that was the last chapter that we did um it, as it relates to this mm-hmm. particular episode so now we can take this and use this as our jumping off point to finish the book so yeah. um yeah that's that well and then i think what we'll do is we'll do a little bit more of a comparison to the book and the show i think yeah uh in our in our final season wrap going to break your commandment book is book and show is show i know i know but you know here's the thing i think the book is a really great companion as opposed to an adaptation Mm -hmm. uh and i think that it's only i think it's apropos to to compare the two let's do it let's go all in so that's that all right here we go let's close this bad boy out shall we
want to thank all of you for listening right now in your earbuds, in your ear pods, your headphones, your devices, your cars. Thank you for taking the time to hang out and rehash such a just delightfully fun and simple, you know, show yeah. that really Blake and I were nervous at first about you know, do we do these recaps? It's not like we get to go into these big theories. It's not like talking and dissecting an episode of Outlander or a show that, you know, we normally do. This was very different. So this was a new adventure for us as it was for Sam and Graham. And we want to thank you for joining this ride with us for being with us live. We've had so many of you who have joined us on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram. We want to remind you once again, we're on all those channels, normally at Mary and Blake. So if you just search Mary and Blake, you'll see us pop up there. We actually have a Facebook community. If you've been enjoying your time with us where we chat all of these fandoms, we talk about uh, Outlander. We talk about all the other shows that we watch and um, you can search for our exclusive Facebook community. Just search Mary and Blake. We would love to have you there. It would be so much joy for us. Yeah, it was the, it's the Mary and Blake Facebook group. Just trust me. It, you, you can talk about all the great nerd things that you want over there. Just enjoy that and be a part of it. So Mary and Blake Facebook group, of course, don't, don't miss out. Just yeah. don't miss out. And thank you to our friends at jointhenerdclan.com. For as little as $2 a month, you support our podcast. We don't just podcast about Outlander. Of course, we podcast several days during the week covering fandoms that you've um, asked us to cover, covering things that we have wanted to bring to the table. And it is all because of listener support like you. Yes, yep. we have occasional sponsors like scotlandshop.com, who we love and trust. But because of the pandemic, things have just changed. And mm-hmm. we really, really rely upon and appreciate those of you who are patrons of ours at jointhenerdclan.com and don't forget too all the members of jointhenerdclan.com voted for our next major podcast that we will be doing and that is The Last Kingdom so we will be starting that at the end of This Is Us Season 5 so look for that probably in the June-ish area I think yeah because we got about yeah, we got about six or six, I think we got five or six more episodes of This Is Us to go. So, yeah. uh, and then once once that finishes, we're moving right on. I think we'll take a week worth of a break and we're moving right on to The Last Kingdom. We don't stop. We don't stop this train. Well, thanks once again. I hope that you enjoyed your time. We will be having more episodes, as we said, Clan Lint related, Men and Kilts related. So stay tuned and make sure you subscribe to wherever you see it. And my name is Mary. My name is Blake. And you've been listening to Outlander Cast.